In this video, I want to talk about what I would eat if I was diagnosed with COVID-19 coronavirus. Well, the first thing to know about that is that the pre-existing conditions greatly increase your risk of not just in the susceptibility to getting the virus, but in the complications and even the death rate. And I'm talking about diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, and obesity. These are the big ones. There's other ones too, but all of these have a common denominator, high insulin. And I'm talking about diabetes type two right here. And there's a very simple way to deal with this. Okay. What you do is you go on a low carb diet. Okay. And we're talking the ketogenic diet, moderate protein, high fat. High fats in the diet are totally fun to do as long as you keep your carbohydrates low. And of course, I always recommend the healthy version of the ketogenic diet. I put a link down below if you want to know what that is and how to do it. Getting on the diet will greatly help support healthy insulin levels. Now, the other things I would do, I would start to consume food high in zinc. And I just want to say that anything I say in this video is not meant to diagnose or replace your medical care or provide a treatment for the coronavirus. Check with your doctor before taking any of this advice. There's a huge association between having enough zinc in your body and having your immune system work properly. Almost at every single level of your immune defenses, zinc is involved. And if you wanted to know what foods are highest in zinc, oysters are the number one food. Other shellfish would be another option, red meat, cheese. There's other foods, but these have probably the most zinc. Zinc is very, very important in supporting a healthy thymus gland. And the thymus is a training camp for certain immune cells. So it's very, very important. And if you're deficient in zinc, your thymus actually shrinks. The next thing I would do is make sure I have enough vitamin D. You can get that in cod liver oil, salmon, fatty fish, but it's very, very difficult to consume foods and get the amount of vitamin D that you need. So I would highly recommend getting enough sun. 20 minutes every single day would give you enough vitamin D because vitamin D is what's called an immune modulator. So it keeps the immune system from overreacting where you have so much inflammation and collateral damage, it could damage your lungs and other tissues. So vitamin D is very, very important in keeping the immune system at a balanced level. Certain viruses have a strategy of blocking the receptor for vitamin D. Taking enough vitamin D can actually override that so you can keep that uh, immune support at a high level. And then you have vitamin C, very important in uh, supporting a healthy immune system, especially dealing with viruses. Leafy greens will give you a lot of vitamin C. Um, sauerkraut, if you actually make your own sauerkraut or get a high quality sauerkraut from either a farmer's market or the health store, you could get a tremendous amount of vitamin C, sometimes 700 milligrams. And really all you need is between 70 and 90 milligrams as the RDA. Now, of course, that doesn't account for all types of sauerkraut because there's different versions, but I'm just talking at the high end, we're starting at 700 and it's probably gonna go down from there. Berries are a good source of vitamin C as well. There's a lot of other foods that have vitamin C, but the more you cook foods or you can foods, you lose not just vitamin C and vitamin D, but zinc too. Canned foods will deplete the effectiveness of zinc by 85%. And by the way, if you think that you're gonna consume like orange juice for your vitamin C, you're mistaken because they pasteurize or use high temperatures and cook the orange juice that destroys the vitamin C. The vitamin C that you would have in that orange juice is usually coming from an added synthetic version of vitamin C called ascorbic acid. And it's my opinion that is definitely not the same as the vitamin C that comes from actual fruits and vegetables. And lastly, let's talk about this uh, thing called stress. I know it might be hard to believe, but some people are actually stressed out nowadays. Now, stress increases cortisol. Cortisol, chronically elevated, as in long-term stress, can severely affect your immune system. It causes your 
lymphatic system to shrink. It makes your lymph nodes decrease. It decreases the antibody production, so you lose your ability to fight infection. It also greatly increases your susceptibility to getting viruses and bacteria. I would actively and aggressively do what I can to keep stress at a minimum, and that would definitely include not watching the news so much because there are so many messages that are all about doom and gloom, bad news over and over and over, fear, fear, fear. Guess what that does to the immune system? It really makes the person way more susceptible to getting the infection as compared to not being in that state of worry and anxiety. If you actually trace it back to right before they got that infection, I would say nearly 100% of the time they had a stress event. Stress is a huge trigger to not only being susceptible to viruses, but activating viruses that are already inside your body. This explains why people, when they get stressed, they have shingles, they get herpes, they get all sorts of other health problems. We have getting on the right diet to minimize these conditions right here, eating foods high in the three most important nutrients, and lowering stress. And lastly, if you haven't seen my videos on the nutrients or these conditions here, I put the videos up right here. Check them out.